I think his, when I stood in the street when I was nearly four, and I saw all the German planes coming over. Um, but everybody stood out in the street, and the, the whole sky was just full of formations of German bombers droning and going on. They weren't attacking South London. They were going on to destroy the um, the docks and all that area, you know, trying yeah. to do that. So, but there was hundreds and hundreds, all in formations, in blocks, you know, all going... And we were all out in the street, all the... Um, I was a little boy, of course, uh, uh, but all the um, local people were out in the street and we were all cheering because we could see the white white lines going through where the Spitfires and the Hurricanes were attacking them, you know, and so we were all cheering and all that, and I remember it vividly. Best lesson I learned, mm -hmm. the, the community, the, the help, you know, everybody being so good to each other, helping each other. In our street, you could walk in anybody's house any time of the day or night. The doors were always open, front doors. Um, everybody helped everybody else. They shared food, they shared clothes. You know, when they ran out of clothes, they sent them. To, you know, when their kids grew up and they, they took the clothes and gave them to other people whose kids were little and all that. It was amazing. And if anybody got ill, they would make a collection all around the street, you know, or someone died, they'd make a collection for it was it was amazing. And I think that was the the great thing about England at the time, you know. Well obviously it would have been a big joke, wouldn't it? I mean <laughs> when my grandmother said it when I was born and she went to see me as a child. When I was like two weeks old, she stood amongst all the relatives and said, picked me up and said, This boy's going to be world famous. And everybody were all be laughed. I thought it was a big joke. So it's a similar thing, you know. Um, of course, no. The only thing I remember is when I first went to see a band play, when my, uh, my aunt took me when I was eight or nine, near the end of the war, she took me to Croydon to, to the Orchid Ballroom, I think it was. And I saw them doing the jitterbug, or the like jiving, early jiving, if you know what that is. But it was called jitterbug in those days. And uh, I saw a big band on the on the roster of playing, you know, to the dancers. And then I thought it would be great if I could be in a band one day. But I, I just never thought it would ever happen, obviously. I don't think people really appreciate just how poor it was, how hungry we were, how cold we were. We never had heating in the houses. You scraped food wherever you could get it, you know, it was on rationing. And the amazing thing was rationing continued. The war ended in 1945, but rationing continued till 1953. We were still rationed, you know, because of, you know, getting stuff across from abroad. Because during the war, the new boats would sink all the, all the, all the um, boats that were coming across from America and other places with food, as they always did. They'd just sink them. And so you were always scraping for anything to eat, you know. And uh, like I said in the book, on one occasion, there was nothing to eat. And my, my mother sent me up to a bonsai at the end of the road to pick dandelion leaves to see if we could eat those. Disgusting. <laughs> Don't ever do it. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was it was that bad. And sometimes my my mum wouldn't wake us up in the mornings because there was nothing to eat. So she she didn't want to get us up because she couldn't have anything until she could borrow from the relatives or something and you know, all the neighbours. Um, it was that bad, you know. And you can't people can't envision that. No. I was never warm. I was I was cold right until I, you know I was a teenager, because you didn't have electricity until I was sixteen, um, and so we never had heating in the houses. Um, you know, there was nothing, so you was always always cold, always hungry. So I I swore that would never happen to my children, and it never has, because my houses are always 
really warm. <laughs> Everybody says, blimey, do you, know, do you want it this warm? I say, yes. Well, there wasn't birthday Christmases, uh, really. They weren't celebrated, really. Um, but yes, my grandmother made the most amazing bread puddings. You know, then with the with the crispy bits on top. You know. Oh, they were, and when you cut them, they're all crispy right inside. They're all juicy, you know. And I never forget them. And no one's ever made them like that since. You know, I've never had them since like that. Um, I think it's more personal, me, you know, much more personal, um, digging deep into my memory as a little boy. And uh, the other ones were much more like what was happening as I was growing up, much older, and music and so on and so on, and archaeology, what I did, and um, people I met and all that kind of thing. This is much more personal, the, the little boy that grew up in the war, you know, and, and suffered all those hardships, which we all did. It wasn't unique. Everybody did, and you actually you thought it was normal because you all shared the same problems, you know, all around you. So it was just normal. But it was years later you suddenly realised just how abnormal it was, <laughs> you know. But there we go. Just appreciate the the, the amenities they have now, you know, and. Uh, and realise that, you know, we were alone against everybody, you know, the whole of Europe had been destroyed by the Germans. We were the only ones left. And uh, the spirit of the, of the people was amazing. It really was. I even remember it as a little boy, you know. Everybody was amazing. And um, it was great when I saw Winston Churchill once. In, in the car, come through the main street in, in where we lived, you know, and we, had, we, we went out, all the good school kids, we had little flags and that, and he came in his open top car, and he was waving to us with a cigar and he was doing the V sign, which he always did, you know, and it, I was only like 12, 12 feet away from him, you know, it was an extraordinary moment. They were moments that always remain in your head, you know, because it never happened again. So I actually saw Churchill that close. And I saw the Crystal Palace burn down when I was five weeks old. <laughs> well, I saw it, but obviously I don't, yeah. I don't remember it, but um, there we are. Well, it is really, isn't it? I mean, I, I'm, other people, they've written, they've done books and, and, and they've done um, films about wartime and all that, you know. Most of them have been pretty great. Um, but to actually be there and see the fear on your, your mother's face when the bombing was going on, on my grandmother's face, and, and all the other people that were in the air raid shelter sharing with you, like terrified when you're hearing the sound of the bombs falling and everything. Yeah. You didn't, when you were little, you didn't really have the fear until you saw it in your parents, how scared they were. And then, of course, you were scared. But if, if they weren't like that, you weren't like it. It was just like normal life. It really was. And when you tried out weird stuff like whale meat once, when they tried to introduce that because they couldn't get other foods, you know. I don't even remember what it tastes like, but we never had it again. <laughs> You know, so, so I'm sure it didn't go down well with your tops. I don't even remember what it was like. It was just all rubbery. We would borrow your dad's sort of, you know, screwdriver or something, go out and dig them, dig them out and play with them in the uh, school, you know, who had the most marbles and the nicest ones. And of course, when people saw us doing it, of course they went mad because it, they were really, it was really important. But it was a naughty little ploy we had and it was just fun to do and it was great to play with marbles. And I've still got marbles, a collection of marbles in my house in the country.
do you have any of the marbles? No, not of no. the, no, but uh, I always enjoyed adding marbles afterwards in memory of <laughs> Well, no, I had one friend um, who I talk about in the, in the book called Jimmy Pierce, who, who wanted to hit, beat me up when I was seven at school and I turned and hit him by computer accident. I gave him a nosebleed and he went off crying. He was huge. And then he became my friend and I, then I became friends with him when I did my military service in Germany in the RAF in Oldenburg in Germany, he was there as well, so we made friends again. But no, um, very few, I don't, I don't remember really any, and yeah, in early, in my junior years, in my teenage years, in my early twenties, yes, but not, not now. No, I have no, no contact with anybody. Funnily, my sister stays in contact with people that were in our street, oh, which is which is amazing. Yeah, yeah that's right. She always says, I said, saw Freddie Curtis the other day. I said, Freddie Curtis. Yeah, you remember, you used to live down there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think she knows. I really do. Um, she taught me everything. She taught me to keep a diary. She told me to collect things. I collected little coins if I had them. I collected postage stamps. I collected cigarette cards. They used to be in cigarette packets. And all my relatives smoked cigarettes, so they always gave me the little cards at the back, you know. And I'd, I had—I used to collect all those. She got me to make a scrapbook and cut things out and put them in. She showed me how to make the sticky stuff from glue, uh, from, um, sorry, from flour. Yeah. Um, I, d I don't know if I could do it now, but I don't know how she did it, but we used to use that to stick things in. And um, I had this whole collection of stuff, and then she read me all the great uh, classic books. She was well read, you know, she, and she had some wonderful books. And then she read me all, like, Robinson Crusoe, Gulliver's Travels, Treasure Island, Wind in the Willows, which is my favourite. And um, so she introduced me to all that as well. She was amazing. And she, uh, and she got me to play piano, do piano lessons. And she took me to the Royal College of Music behind the Albert Hall, um, where I passed my first two piano exams. I, I'm, I'm forever grateful to her. I think it made me realise how much they depend on other people and how to be nice to everybody because if you weren't in the wartime, you suffered. You, know, you had to be friends with everybody and you always were. Um, and I learned that again in the military, you know, mates together, you know. And so I always had that attitude where I was friendly with everyone and I got on well with everyone and I was able to joke with everyone. And I carried that right through my music career as well, you know, and um, I've always been that kind of a person. Um, so I think that does come from those times, you know, and it was a learning curve. It's probably the little house that she gave me when I, when I first went to live with her, when I came down from Nottingham by myself, you know train um, when I was five and she gave me this garden of toys, you know, toys in those days, didn't have enough money for them. And so she gave me a little, little, a little house um, and um, I used to have that and put it under my pillow. And she used to uh, recite to me the stories, this is the, this is the house that Jack built uh, and, and all those little stories about houses. and. Uh, um, and that, that was a, a special thing, and we've done a little picture of it in the book, actually. I do have memories of a lot of other music at the time, because my aunts used to play it. And then when I lived with my grandmother, my, my grandmother used to play it on a little radio they had by then. and. Um, 
So I'd probably hear very early Frank Sinatra. I'd hear all the early uh, big band stuff. And I'd hear all the English bands at the time, a band called Ambrose. And they had um, two great g g male singers and a girl singer. His name was Al Bowley. The other guy was Sam Brown, I think. And the girl was called Elsie Carlisle. And she's like one of my favorites and I've collected all of them. Because every time I heard a song, I remembered. It was nostalgia, I remembered it from the war times, you yeah. know. And I had nice memories of them all. So I collected them all in the end, and I've got tons of them now. It's just another thing, you know, you just, it's just to remind you of those times. One would be Elsie Carlisle singing My Canary's got his circles under his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great song from the 30s. Because uh, I still got that. I mean, it's great. And um, and then there would be a Fats Waller song. Because I was crazy about him at the time. Because uh, one of my relatives had his records, which I was able to sit here later and <clears throat> possibly well I'm going a bit later now of course it would be Stan Kenton doing the peanut vendor do you know that I saw him live in Germany when I was in the military I saw the band in Bremen and uh, they were extraordinary it was a huge big band playing all that stuff Old Discord and all that, um, and they all stood up in sections, you know. It was amazing. So, yeah, that's just those three, I think. There's probably another hundred, which I'm not thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's no worries, but that, that's perfect. So that's everything that we've got. So thank you so much for sitting down with us today and coming past your questions. Pleasure.